these are amazing sins from this guy named Wickham they are in all his songs part of what makes them great That's right, today we're talking about the synths behind one of today's most sung worship artists, Phil Wickham. At Sunday Sounds, of course, we love synth sounds, and we think it's one of the big secrets and keys to Phil Wickham's signature sound. And that's never been more true than on his most recently released album. So make sure you watch this video all the way through to the end because you'll learn to identify the most vital synth sounds and how they contribute to the overall signature sound that Phil Wickham has. Not only will you learn how to identify these sounds by ear, but also how to apply them to your own worship team. Now for that goofy little intro, I used a patch from our Sunday Keys app called This Is Amazing. And I'm sure you're familiar with the Phil Wickham song, This Is Amazing Grace. That song's been out for quite a while now, but this patch is sort of an attempt to capture that specific kind of Phil Wickham sound. So you could use it for This Is Amazing Grace, and you could use it for a bunch of other Phil Wickham songs too. It has that really bright poly lead sound in the right hand. And then our bass and pads and sort of a bit more ambience in the left hand. But Phil Wickham's sound, though it's often relied on since across his entire discography, has changed, grown, and evolved over time. And that's especially true. There's been a huge progression on his newest album called I believe. This record features all sorts of different synth sounds, and it seems to me to pull from all these different eras of Phil Wickham's artistry in really interesting ways. To me, it feels like a sort of definitive album in some way. So I want to break down some of the synth parts and the ideas behind them. And no one song does this more succinctly than the lead number, This Is Our God. Let's break down some of the parts and sounds on this song, and we'll use it to create sort of a definitive any Phil Wickham song kind of patch maybe an updated version of This Is Amazing. And make sure you watch to the end because we're gonna share a setlist link that you can use to download this exact setlist inside of your Sunday Keys app and add this patch to your own library. I'm gonna be programming this patch inside of the Sunday Keys app. Sunday Keys app is available for both iPad and Mac. All right, so let's talk a little bit about This Is Our God. The song is at 80 BPM or 160, depending on how you wanna count it. It's in C, 4-4. First off, I wanna just, I'm gonna set this tempo to 80, and I want to just see how well This Is Amazing does. We'll just see. Okay, well, it doesn't sound like the modern Phil Wickham sound that's across this entire album. It still sounds cool, but it also sounds like some earlier eras of Phil Wickham. So let's build a patch from scratch and more precisely hone in on the signature sound that comes across in this song and across the entire album. Now there's lots of synth programming going on in this song, but maybe the most prominent is that right hand riff that starts off the intro, happens after all of the choruses. So let's focus first on dialing something in for that right hand. Now the right hand lead sound here is not just a super saw synth, like this is Amazing Grace. It's a bit more layered, it's a bit more nuanced, there's more going on here. So I'm gonna to go to leads, and I think what I'm gonna end up doing is probably layering a couple different things together. I know I need a mono lead, so we could try a couple out. That has a lot of attack, a lot of definition. And that has very little definition that sort of comes in afterwards. This is a saw mono lead, but it's just too aggressive. Let's see about this one. There we go. It has this little chirp on the attack, a little bit of pitch glide, but then it's sort of subtle afterwards a little bit of a, a quiver in the sustain. I really like that, so let's add that sound. And then we're gonna define the layer range. Tap the icon here. I think we only need to go down to the C. Okay, cool. So that's providing sort of the pure tone and that pitch glide. But we need to add something to beef it up. So I think we're gonna add another lead sound 
And this time we're going to do something with a bit more grit and something that's polyphonic so those notes can ring out as the, the whole riff is, is played. We could try this bell lead. Might be a little bit too bright. This dance lead is, I think, a trance lead. It's a little bit too, this is amazing, right? How about we go here? This is one of my favorite poly lead sounds. It's pretty thin, and both of these lead sounds together are just big enough to fill this space. I think I like that, I'm gonna add it. And then we're gonna match the layer range, so. Okay, cool. And then if I wanted to, I could adjust the max brightness for this poly lead, open sound settings, and I could have it get a little bit darker with the mod wheel down. I like that. Okay, so now we're gonna place a piano in the middle of the keyboard. We might extend it up to the right hand as well. What kind of piano sound? Most of the pianos that I hear on this album are pretty tight and compressed. It's very much like a studio polish kind of feel because there's lots of ambience in the textures around. So I think I'm gonna go for a nice, safe, grand piano and something that is uh, middle of the road. Not super dynamic, not super aggressive, but definitely has a good bit of compression on it. So I think I'm just gonna choose SK Grand Smashed. Let's add that in here. That's just a good safe bet. It's gonna cover space because of the compression that smashed on it. It's gonna hang in the air nicely. Let's see if we wanna let it layer in the right hand as well. I think we probably do. So I'm gonna leave that in there for now. We might do some more programming with some effects later to wash it out a little bit. Okay, so now let's talk about synths and textures. There's a couple different kinds of synths that I'm hearing all over this album. Of course, there's tons of pads. There's always tons of pads. This is CCM. The day there stopped being tons of pads is the day the genre probably ceases to exist. But let's not just go straight to warm pad land. First, I wanna talk about bright sort of ethereal since in the past we probably would have called these like shimmer pads but they're not quite as simple as that anymore it's not just adding tons of a shimmer plug-in or a shimmer pedal on top of your synth sounds there's more going on like the notes themselves are actually being triggered higher and being processed differently than they were even five years ago so uh let me just kind of show you what i mean you'll notice the difference between these sorts of shimmery bright sparkly synths, and then what would be a warm pad. Oftentimes you're layering these things together instead of just applying shimmer to a warm pad sound. And that's what I'm hearing a lot of on this record. So we could just go for something bright, right? Like. And that, that, that could work, but it still just feels a little bit, a little bit safe. And this album has really interesting textures. There's one in particular pad here that I really think exemplifies this sort of vibe well. And let me bring down these other layers so you can really hear it. And when I say like it's glimmery or, or sparkly and it, it has more to do with the in and out of it, it's not just this wall of brightness, but it's these moments of glistening sort of textures that happen on top of things. And that's all over this album, and it's layered in with warm pads. So we've got this glass spirals pad, which is just kind of there, but it has these moments where it pokes through. And then let's put a warm pad right alongside it. So we'll go to warm pads here. We could try out a few different ones. Prince pad. It's like a, almost a string pad vibe. There are, there are some strings in this album, but there's more like of this analog-y or even like organ uh, pad sort of vibe. Let's try this one. Like that. Let's try warm pad one. This is definitely like the, the iconic classic warm pad sound. Warm pad two. I think that sits nicely. Let's bring back in our other layers and see where we're at. So we've got just a bit of that pad below here. Bass 
Based on that, I've got a couple of layer range tweaks that I want to make. Specifically, I want to take this warm pad down so that it's not interacting with that right hand stack at all. Because as I play those notes, I've got the sustain pedal pressed, which I want to have for my left hand. But then all of those pad notes just start to bleed together, ends up being a bit of a mess. So I'm going to bring warm pad down to there. So I've got a couple of different ambient layers, a couple of different lead layers, and I've got this piano, which so far is just full range across the keyboard. Now let's swipe over to the right and keep building this patch out a bit. I think we can make it sound a bit more full and add some more texture. First off, let's start to address the low end. Let's go to bass and see what we can find. Two resonance. I know I don't want to pluck bass. I definitely want it to sustain. This square bass is really cool. It's really big, kind of nasally, and it's got a nice defined character to the attack. So I'm going to bring the volume down a bit and save, and we'll save with the, the mod wheel down too. So if we play everything all together. All right, it's sounding really nice, but we can beef this thing up a little bit more by just adding an ARP or some sort of time-based texture in the left hand that's stacked with this bass. Let's add that here. We'll go to ARPs and sequences and view ARPs. And we could try a chord ARP or we could go for one of these left hand ARPs since we know we want to trigger notes only in the left hand. Nice. I like that one, but it's half time from what I want it to be. So I'm going to increase the subdivision. There we go. And while we're at it, let's just see if we can add another one. Maybe really beef this up a bit. So, add this one. I really want it to be sort of distinctly different from the one that we just dropped in so that they're not stepping on top of each other too much. There we go. So we've got basic synth and brighten down. What I'm going to do here is bring the note order to random. I'm going to set the subdivision to quarter. It's going to be really sporadic. There you go. These textures now that sort of just work together to fill this extra space. This sort of polishes what's on all of these fully produced albums, these, these singles. And so we can easily get these kinds of textures and then just sit them in the background a little bit in the mix. Now let's see how we're sounding. Nice. That's sounding really, really cool. Okay, I've got one more really, really specific thing that I want to do. And this is, it's not a pad, it's not a synth, and it's not exactly an organ, but there's this sort of organ-like texture that pops up all over the record. And I think I want to add it as a left hand, but sort of a, a trigger only thing. So let's just focus in on, on the right organ sound first. I'm going to go to synth and digital organ. And I've got a couple options here. <laughs> Okay, or I've got... That's too thin. I think... I'm gonna go pull from this. This was sampled off of an old DX7 synthesizer, released in 1983, that's the name. We're gonna limit it to the left hand only. I'm gonna set my lowest note to C1 and my highest note to B1. Now we're going to program a chord trigger around this specific pattern that we're looking for. So I'm going to replace this MIDI effect with easy chord 
And now we'll play the input note. And I want to play four octaves of the one for the output. Okay, now we'll add another for D. Do another for E. Another for F. I'm just working my way up the C scale. If you were doing this in a different key, you would you know, just do it in whatever key you needed. Okay, and now we're done. So now, when we turn the effect on, we get that. Okay, so let's trigger our snapshot in and bring all the other layers back in the mix. Bring that down just a touch and make sure we save it with the easy chord effect on. Here's how it's sounding all together. Nice, I think this sounds really powerful and it's definitely nailing the vibe of this specific song, but I think we could use this to cover all sorts of different Phil Wickham songs. So let's take a minute and make this versatile enough to cover any of the songs from this new record. All you will need to do is adjust some of the snapshots. So first off, let's set this first snapshot up to be sort of our down snapshot. So I'm gonna make some quick decisions and bring these lead parts out. I'm gonna leave these pads in the mix a little bit, bring the, the bass most of the way down. We're gonna leave this first arc in and take the second one out. We'll take that pipe organ out as well. And I'm gonna save. So we're gonna start here. Okay, pretty subtle. We'll go ahead and name this one down. All right, now let's give ourselves two more dynamic levels and then you can adjust however you need to to play specific songs. So we're gonna build ourselves a medium snapshot. So we're gonna leave those lead sounds out for now, but we're gonna increase the intensity of the pads, bring in that synth bass a little bit more, bring this primary arp up a good bit and just barely introduce the secondary one. And then we'll add in some of this organ. We'll also increase the brightness of the synth sounds by bringing up the mod wheel. How does that sound? Yeah, about half sounds right. So once things are dialed in, just hit save. Now we've got snapshot two that will recall all of these settings. And we'll name this medium. Let's go ahead here to snapshot three. And this is gonna be our all in moment. So we'll bring the brightness all the way up and we're really going in with these layers. We'll bring the synth bass up a good bit as well. And we'll bring up the prominence of this secondary arpeggiated sound quite a bit. And the same goes for this organ. Let's try this. Maybe a little bit too much bass. Nice. Okay, I think that sounds pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and save it and we will name it big. So let's just play something completely unrelated. I'm just gonna make something up in the key of F. We'll stay at 80 BPM and we'll see whether it feels familiar, if it feels like it has that same sort of sonic character as this Phil Wickham album does. Build up to medium. Sounds really cool and we could take this to whatever other keys we wanted, other tempos that we wanted, we could even change the time signature. To me this really does kind of 
encapsulate most of the ingredients that define this album from Phil Wickham sonically when it comes to the synth sounds. Now, of course, there's tons of nuance. The folks that produced this album did an incredible job of varying the work from song to song. But the big ideas, I think, can come through in a single patch. So here's what to do next. If you have a Sunday Keys license, you can access the shared setlist link in the description of this video on your Sunday Keys app device, and it will prompt you to add this setlist to your own library. So you can actually grab this PW patch. If you're wondering where to go from here, we'll also put a link in the description to a more in-depth study we did of Phil Wickham's entire history as an artist with a specific focus on the way he's used synth sounds across all of his albums to define their signature sound. We went really nerdy on that one, went into a bunch more detail on not just his newer songs, but his older stuff too. So you should check that video out if you're a Phil Wickham fan like I am.